Senator John McCain, the admiral's son who chose captivity and torture rather than violate a principle of honor, the self-styled straight-talking maverick. The truth is sometimes a hard pill to swallow. Republican nominee for president. Fight for what's right for our country. A man who would defend his opponents. He's an Arab. He is not. No. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma he's a. He's a. He's a decent family man. And demonstrate grace in loss. Senator Obama has achieved a great thing. Join me in offering our next president our goodwill and earnest effort. Above all, a flawed but principled lifelong public servant. I've tried to deserve the privilege as best I can, and I've been repaid a thousand times over with adventures, with good company, with the satisfaction of serving something more important than myself. And I am so grateful. John McCain's iconic American journey has reached its end. Hello, I'm Jake Tapper in Washington, where the state of our union is in mourning. The loss of a senator, father, maverick, American hero, John Sidney McCain III, his remarkable life coming to an end at 81 years old after being diagnosed with brain cancer last year. Facing such adversities with courage was his trademark, whether it was enduring repeated torture at the hands of the North Vietnamese for more than five years, or during grinding political campaigns, or the early morning thumbs down that turned his own party on its head. McCain was a case study in resilience to the Mr. very Portman. end. His daughter, Megan McCain, who was at the senator's side when he died, recently wrote, Mr. quote, Reed. all that I am is thanks to him. Now that he is gone, the task of my lifetime is to live up to his example, his expectations, and his love. The measure of this man not only displayed by the tributes and kind words and prayers from his political allies, but from his former adversaries, his death coming nine years to the day that his good friend, Democratic Senator Edward Kennedy, died from the same disease. About a year ago, in one of his final network interviews, already facing this grim diagnosis, I asked the senator how he wanted to be remembered. How do you want the American people to remember you? Uh, he served his country, and not always right. Made a lot of mistakes, made a lot of errors, but served his country, and I hope we could add honorably I think that we can say honorably. Joining us now to reflect on the life and legacy of Senator McCain is his fellow Republican and now senior senator from Arizona, Jeff Flake. Senator, thanks so much for joining us in this horrible, horrible weekend. You've had a close relationship with your fellow Arizona senator. Did you get a chance to say goodbye to him? I did. I was uh, privileged to be there the, the day before he passed, uh, to be there with the family. and. I was uh, so glad uh, that I was able to be there. Did you, did you get to say anything, or, or was he not in a condition to receive visitors? You know, he, the entire family was gathered around. The, the door was open, uh, Oak Creek uh, just uh, dribbling by. It was just an incredible, wonderful scene to see the family and to see him and to, to express my appreciation to them and to him. Um, so uh, I was just uh, privileged to be there. I want to show you this headline from the Washington Post editorial board this meeting. The editorial board titles uh, their tribute to the senator, John McCain, the irreplaceable American, and they write, Mr. McCain on numerous occasions rose above party politics to pursue what he honestly saw as a national interest, and he accomplished a great deal. The country has lost an irreplaceable asset. What do you think the loss of Senator McCain will mean for the Senate and for the U.S.? Well, his voice uh, was important, uh, well, has been for years, but never more important than the past year. And, and that's one thing that I expressed to the family, uh, the gratitude of all of us, that they took such good care of John and made sure that he was able to speak, uh, you know, in this, these last few months. Uh, when it was so important. So uh, it, it's tough to have a voice like that silenced, uh, but this voice for civility, uh, f to put uh, you know, the, the country above your party, uh, these are things that he taught for years and uh, never more important than, than the last year. His life, his entire life really, was, was devoted to, to serving the United States, uh, including enduring more than five years of confinement and torture in a North Vietnamese
prisoner of war right. camp. He suffered injuries that he felt literally for the rest of his life. Here's what he said in his speech to the American Red Cross in 1999, quote, War is wretched beyond description, and only a fool or a fraud could sentimentalize its cruel reality. How did you see his experience in Vietnam in terms of how it shaped his character and how it shaped the, the way he lived his life? Well, he said many times that uh, he grew to appreciate his country when he uh, was serving time in another country. Uh, and uh, he didn't uh, fully appreciate what he had until he, he served as a prisoner of war. I, I do think that that uh, left an indelible mark. Uh, he could have come home and retired right after that and, and have served the country so honorably. But uh, we were fortunate to have another 30 or so years uh, where he told us and uh, taught us uh, to put uh, the country above yourself, to serve a cause greater than yourself. And that, I think, came from his experience in Vietnam and certainly came from what he saw were the tragedies of war. Uh, but, but he was a, a lover of freedom and he wanted to spread that and uh, was an advocate to the end of strong American leadership and never apologizing for America and its values. Uh, that's something that, uh, that he leaves with us. He, he was often uh, unpredictable. Um, let, let's just show that moment from last summer uh, where Senator McCain entered the Senate chamber late at night and cast the deciding vote to kill a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare. That's a plan you voted the other way uh, on. Um, you talked to him on the Senate floor uh, right before that vote. Uh, what was that conversation like? <laughs> well, yes, I did. And uh, he, uh, John McCain is quintessentially Arizonan. He's a maverick. He's independent. Um, I, uh, I didn't uh, vote the same way he did, but I admired him for doing what he did. And uh, it, was, it was John through and through. Uh, he, uh, as he spoke to the Senate at that time, talked about how we needed to come together and not do things in just a partisan way. Uh, that was his biggest issue with that approach that we were taking, that it wasn't a bipartisan approach. He, he recognized, and he was a, a huge institutionalist and loved the Senate because the Senate forces individuals and parties to come together. And, and he wasn't seeing that, and we haven't been that kind of uh, institution for a while. So I understood, certainly, why he voted the way he did, and I admired him for it. You've been very outspoken about the direction of the Republican Party and, in your view, the failures of, of President Trump. How much did Senator McCain play any sort of role or influence you in any way in, in the position you've taken? Well, I've admired John McCain my entire life. I, I haven't known Washington or politics without him, so he's, he's left an indelible mark. And uh, just putting... Uh, Putting you know, the good of the country uh, above your own self-interest, I think that that was his mantra. And uh, whether it's a, his approach to the current administration or his approach in general, I, I think that that's uh, something I've certainly learned from him and, and we could all learn in, in these days. And seeing the good in your opponents, uh, that, uh, you know, the, the fact that uh, George W. Bush uh, will be speaking at his funeral or that he was asked to, uh, the person that defeated him, also Barack Obama. That says all that we need to know about John McCain, that his opponents love, admire, and respect him. Uh, that's, that's something that we could all strive for. Notably absent from the funeral, of course, will be President Trump, uh, who will not be invited per Senator McCain's wishes. Uh, President Trump denigrated McCain, denigrated his war heroism. Uh, do you think that there's something about the character of Senator McCain that will be all the more missed because of the man who's in the White House right now? Well, uh, we, we've certainly needed uh, John McCain's voice over the past year, and despite the circumstances, we've had it. And uh, I, I just uh, I, I think that, that we could do with this kind of approach to politics, and we'd do well to remember John McCain and his legacy as we go forward. So I know that that's what he would like. One of my last long conversations with John for probably over an hour was in February of this year as we sat out on the deck and we reminisced about uh, the old Arizona politicians that he knew and admired so much, people like Mo Udall, 
a Democrat and uh, the, the local figures here as well, but he expressed optimism at that time that leaders would rise to the fore in the future uh, who would put the good of the country above themselves. And so I, I think that we ought to take that forward. I want to play uh, for you a clip from Senator McCain talking about you on the Senate floor last year after you announced that you would not run for re-election. Let's take a listen. One of the great privileges of my life has been to have the opportunity to know you and serve with you. When the flake service to this country and this Senate is reviewed, it will be of one of honor, of brilliance, and patriotism, and love of country. And I thank you, and God bless you and your family. What's it like to hear those words today? It's tough. I'm going to miss him. Yeah. I, um, I have admired him, like I said, my, my entire life. And uh, it's, uh, it's tough to imagine a Senate uh, without him. It's tough to imagine politics without John McCain. Uh, but uh, we need to go on. Senator Jeff Flake, thank you so much for coming in on what I know is a very difficult morning for you. We appreciate your sharing your thoughts and your memories of the senator. Thank you.